Next song is In Christ Alone. Good morning. The fact we're inside today is only temporary because of the weather forecast for the rain this week and the temperature we made the call to have masks inside in case it was raining, but it's not a permanent thing. As soon as the rain's over, we're back outside. I'm sure glad to be inside though. <laughs> I didn't say that. I already forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, let us begin. And of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is for Cheryl Cochrane. May Cheryl rest in eternal peace. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing 40 days more and Nineveh will be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they had turned how they turned from their evil way. He repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, church. How are you guys doing? So, since I see that you're here, I'm, I'm guessing none of you guys won the mega million dollar thing? No? Nobody? Raise your hand if you did buy a ticket, though. I've, raise your hand if you bought a ticket. Oh, a couple of you guys. You heathens. How do you buy? I'm just kidding. I bought one, too. I bought one, too. Yeah, I went to my sister's house um, yesterday because I didn't, I was working on this talk for, for a long time, and I was like, I just need to get out. And so I called my sisters, and I said, hey, let's have a game night. Let's hang out, have dinner. And so I went to my sister's house, brought a game, uh, and then I asked, and then my sister said, Hey, do you guys buy uh, the, the mega lottery ticket? I'm like, well, how much is it? And she's like, one billion dollars. One billion dollars. Imagine. Imagine having one billion dollars. So I, I went and got a ticket. And, you know, as soon as I had that ticket, I was holding it in my hands. I was like, you, you start to, to dream. You start to hope, right? There, is there something that swells inside of you? I'm like, oh, all the things I can do with this money. Uh, and I was, I was so excited. But, of course, you know, I, 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 talk, I, you know, I started I, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, I'll give the church 51% of that money <laughs> if you just give 51, 51. I, I don't need much. That's 51%. I'll give, I'll give it to the church, you know? And, I, and I, was, I was saying, Lord, you know me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it get to my head. Come on. But he, he does know me. You know why? Because I, 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 you know, I bet 
$40 worth. And you know, of the $40, that means you got like 240 numbers uh, on those tickets. Of all those numbers, I got two. I got two numbers total. None of them are even mega. Um, so, I, you know, it, it would, my hopes and dreams of owning the Lakers were, were gone. <laughs> Eating dinner with LeBron. You know, like it, it was just gone. It, was just, it just disappeared. You know, that hope just went away completely. But that's what happens, right? That's what happens when you put your hope in worldly, temporal things. That's what happens when your hope is on these things that, that will, is fleeting and then will, will go away. You know, winning the lottery is, 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 is more difficult than being hit by lightning. That's, a, that's how hard it is. But yet I had hope in that for a moment. I had hope that, that I was going to win, but it just, it just completely disappeared. A few days ago, on, on the 20th, a lot of us, for some of us, hope disappeared. But for some of us, hope was starting. The change. Uh, but this is, the, this is the problem, though. Like, we were looking for hope in who we put in the White House instead of who we put on the cross. The, the, our hopes were, were placed in something so worldly. Our hopes were placed in something so temporal. No, that, that's really the, the problem, right? We, often when we don't, and you're here, so it, it's not you guys. Uh, uh, often when we don't believe in a higher power, we don't have a true higher power, we make government the higher power. We think that, that it will fix it all. We think that the government, well, you know what? All the problems in the world, if we have if the right government, we, we will, it will fix everything. But, but that's the problem, that if we believe that. Because we think that a man will fix a broken system because we think the system is broken when we know that it's not a system, but it is humanity. Humanity is broken. Because in original sin, in, we have our concupiscence, we have our brokenness and our weakness, and so racism and greed and, and just lust and all those things that we are trying to fight, it is built within us because we are broken, and we, we can't look to a man to think that the, he will fix a system and that we will be all saved. But that man is God that will fix humanity. That's who we look to. That's what we must search for in our hope to make this world a better place, to make us a better person, to make society more loving. It is not a system that is broken, but humanity. And that's why God came down from heaven to be here with us. Job Chapter 8, verse 13 says that, those, uh, says that hope, those who forget God have no hope. Those who forget God have no hope. Our, our, I was listening to a, a talk on hope um, from our, our neighbor, Rick Warren, and he started to say, you know, when, when the world forgets God, this is what happens. Wealth is idolized. Truth is minimized. Life is trivialized. Abortion legalized. We saw that a couple days ago. Conscience is desensitized. Education secularized. Free markets monopolized. Races and politics are polarized. Morals and ethics are liberalized. In entertainment, we see that crime is sensationalized. Immorality proper, um, popularized. Drugs are legitimized. Sin is glamorized. And in the world now, we already see that the break of the family is rationalized, manners are uncivilized, Christians are demonized, God is marginalized. It is no wonder that so many of us have lost hope because that's what we see. That's what we see in the world right now. But my brothers and sisters, when, when we put our hope in these things, when we put our hope in the lottery, 
The, great, the best thing that we could get is a hope that is wishful thinking, lottery, a hope that is expectant, something that we can control, something that is based on something temporal. That's the hope that we can get. But we, as people of faith, we are called to have a, a, a hope that is certain. And that uncertainty is only in God alone, something that is eternal, that, something that is unchanging, something that is constant in our lives. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 says that hope is sure, strong, trustworthy, an anchor for all, us all. Without hope, we will die. We need it in our lives. Let's look at hope as an anchor. Hope as an anchor keeps us from drifting. Hope as an anchor keeps us safe amidst a storm because it keeps us from, from teetering and, and our boat from drowning in that water. A good anchor keeps us alive, afloat. And I'll tell you this, the bigger the boat, the bigger the anchor, right? The smaller the boat, the smaller the anchor. So if we want small lives, have a small anchor. And that small anchor is, could be drugs, alcohol, lust, money, worldly success. That small anchor is temporal. And if you want a small life, then that those maybe will work for you. But as again, as people of faith, we have a greater purpose in our lives. We are called to have a large life, a big life. And because of that, we must have a big anchor. And that is the greatest anchor right there. This is the greatest anchor right here. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, is the anchor that will keep us alive, that will give us hope. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says that we must always pray and never lose heart. Always pray and don't lose heart. So we see that prayer and hope, don't lose hope, is connected. Prayer and hope is connected. And because we are a house of worship, a house of prayer, that in this place we, we pray the greatest prayer in the Mass, we must protect this. And so how will we pray? What will we do in our church at Salado today? And that's what this year's theme is, hope is. Hope is what we focus on today. So what, we're gonna, what are we going to do this year? I wanted to tell you. First and foremost, this is what I promise you. You know, uh, Deacon Carl um, said in the beginning of Mass that, you know, the, the weather's crazy, and so we brought the, the Mass inside. My promise to you is this, that as long as I'm breathing and able to, as long as Father Aristotle is, as long as, you know, I'm still at this parish, I promise you that we will have the Mass and we will give you Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. That's what we're going to do, no matter what. No matter what. Even when I was down sick, Father Aristotle told, came in and says, we need to have the Mass. We can't cancel this like other parishes did when one of the priests gets sick. Father Aristotle said, no, we're, we're giving the Mass to the people. That's how important this is. And so that's our first promise. Last week, we started Alpha, and I, I believe that Alpha, it will be a great way for this parish to, to know and, and love Jesus and to be an anchor, and will start to be the anchor for uh, this parish. In Alpha, we had 160 people sign up from all over the United States, Washington, Arizona, Texas, Hawaii. We had people from all over sign up for our Alpha, and it was a wonderful experience last week. We had a great time. Things that, that are coming up that you will see in our announcements and uh, in our announcements to come. We will have events, uh, we have things like Children's Liturgy of the Word, where our children will, will again have a, a place to, 
uh, be able to hear the word of God in, in a way that they can understand and to build that relationship with God. We will be starting up again MOPs, mothers uh, of preschoolers, so that moms could have a, a community to, to support each other because it's not easy being a mom, we know. We're going to have a, a marriage ministry coming up. Marriage ministry to help uh, why husbands and wives grow closer to each other because we believe that marriage is the foundation of this church. That the family is important. And we want all of you to, to continue to, to build and enrich your relationship with one another. We continue to, to plan our fiesta because we, we're not going to stop here. Solano's not going to stop. So we're, gonna, we're already talking about fiesta and what we're going to do. We're we're going to launch an um, a, a online uh, store for Solano because we, we love seeing you in our, your Solano shirts and hats and all these different things. We have new merch coming out so that you can feel this community because Solano is strong. And we are alive. And we want people to know it. In not too long, we're going to also install solar for our church because we believe that we're not going to end, but we will continue long in the future. We want to protect the environment and we want to make sure that we continue this parish and save money. So we're installing um, that soon. There are some, uh, we uh, know that so many of us are called, know that we're called for more. And so we're starting at this program that the diocese is putting out called, called for more, where it will help people know uh, know what God is calling them to, what their skills are, and to do more in this world to make it a better place, to do more in this church to make it a better place. We have different things that we want in the future that, that we're, we're hoping for, that we haven't really gotten into, but some ideas are we want a, a financial ministry that we can help teach our kids, young couples, or even all, all of us here to know more about how to use money. Because a lot of our young people don't know how to use a credit card properly. We're going to start a young adult ministry again so that our young adults can have a community. I want to bring back altar servers. I want to bring back the, the children's choir in a safe way, uh, the best way that we can. I want all these things for all of us. There's so much that we want for you because we want to stay alive at Solano with Jesus as our anchor. In our first reading, we heard about the Ninevites. And the prophet Jonah didn't believe. They, he thought that they were far gone and that this, this community, that this town will be destroyed in 40 days. But the Ninevites had hope. The Ninevites said, no, we, we won't be destroyed. And so we will start believing in God and we will put ashes and sackcloth on. And because of that, Jesus, the, our God saw their hope. He saw their change. And he took away that destruction and punishment. And they were able to live on. In our second reading, we saw how everything was changing. And at the end of that reading, it said, and the world in its present form will be no longer. And so some of us, those who don't have hope, when they hear this, they say, it's the end of the world. It's the end. It's, it's gone. But as a, as a person of hope, when I hear that the world is in its present form is changing, this is what I hear. I hear that this is the new beginning for us as church. That we must get excited because there's going to be a new evangelization. There's going to be new ministries. There's going to be a new church that will continue on spreading the gospel as Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Our gospel said, in, right in the, uh, in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he starts proclaiming the good news and the repentance and that the kingdom of God is at hand. And he starts to invite people into that ministry. Because there's hope. No one invites people in to a losing team. No one invites people into something that is not good that won't be victorious or triumphant. No one invites you to something that they know is going to fail. Imagine, though, 
when Jesus was taken off the cross and laid in the tomb, what the disciples and the apostles must have felt. They must have thought, well, we were on a, why did we join this losing team? Why, why would we follow someone like that that could die on a cross? But this is the beautiful thing about Jesus Christ and, and the hope and the, and the knowledge and the trust that he had for God, his Father. For although he knew that he would die on the cross for us, he didn't get a permanent tomb. He borrowed one. He borrowed a tomb because he knew, I'm going to use it for only three days. Why should I buy one? Because I will not die for long, be dead for long. You know, when they opened the tomb, right, and, they, and, they, and the apostles walked in, they saw the linen cloth rolled up and folded on the, on the side of where he laid. Do you know what that means? Back then, a servant and a master relationship, a servant will set up the dinner table for his master, and he would just stay in the back watching him, watching him eat. And whenever the master needed to do something, he would fold up his napkin and put it on the table, and he would do whatever he needed to do. But that was a sign for the servant to know that he's not yet done. So he would just wait, wait in service of the Lord, of his master. It is when he was, when he was done, he would crumple up the napkin, he would throw it on the table, and that was when he, the servant knew to, to clean up after the master. So when we saw, when they saw the, the empty tomb with the linens rolled up on the side, folded on the side, Jesus said to them, I am not done, and I will come back again. I am not done. So this church is not yet done. And even though this world may tell us that, maybe some of you are feeling that hopelessness. We are not done. The tomb is still empty. The Lord is still returning. My brothers and sisters, I invite you this year to join me in this year of hope with our theme, Hope Is. Hope is, and we, we left it blank because for so many of us, hope is so many different things, but yet should be the one thing, Jesus Christ. It's so many different ways, but yet only one way, Jesus Christ. Hope is this year. Hope, hope is for us, Jesus Christ. Hope is 2021. Hope is Solano. So I invite you to this winning, winning team, this church, this faith. I invite you to this place. And I know this year, 2021, will be something great. And I'm excited to see what this year has in store for us. Thank you. Will the catechumens and candidates please come forward? Father Dewey's a tough one to follow. You heard him talk about hope. Don't hope for him to win the Mega Millions, the Powerball. Hope for me to win the Mega Millions or Powerball. Hope for yourselves on the journey to the two, true faith, to the true church. Just as you heard in the first reading about the journey in Nineveh. And just as you heard in the gospel, Jesus has called you, he has cast his net around you to bring you to himself, to feed you with his body and blood. Reflect on your journey to the faith, to the true church, to the reception of the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, and be assured of our continued prayers for you. Go in peace.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We have heard God's word with faith-filled hearts. His son has fulfilled the words of the prophets. Let us now offer him our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, the clergy, and all people throughout the world, may they hear and witness the good news of the gospel, we pray. For greater authenticity in our lives, that in our ordinary activities and duties, we manifest the values and virtues of Christian discipleship, we pray. For all who are alienated or disconnected from God, that the Spirit will redirect their, redirect their hearts to the life and wholeness that is found in relationship with Him, we pray. Amen. For Congress and the new administration, that God will inspire their understanding of the current issues and then guide them in addressing the economic, health care, and safety issues of our society, we pray. For greater care for the earth and its resources, that God will guide us in being good stewards of the earth and protecting its resources for future generations, we pray. For all who are ill, particularly for those with the coronavirus, that God will hear the sick, protect the vulnerable from the virus, strengthen health care workers, and make the vaccines effective, we pray. For all who have died, especially Greg Wordark and Bob Hebner, who passed yesterday evening, forgive them their sins and welcome them into your eternal light, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we come as your beloved children. Let the radiance of your light shine in our hearts. Keep us free from error and sin as we come to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, and you are my portion, and you are my hiding place. I believe you. Through every promise, through every 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, the eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a rem remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through, who, through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving him thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, where we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased, confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the assistant bishops Timothy and Tan, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Together, let us make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. Hey, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. By the way, amazing vision talk, Father Dewey. Thank you very much. I felt very... What, what's the word hopeful. All right, all right, that's enough hope. Let's get into the announcements. This week on Friday, January 29th is our first drive-in movie night of the year. Join us in the YFF parking lot at 6 p.m. and watch Disney Pixar's movie Soul. Popcorn, pizza, 
Drinks and jazz will be provided. Need help with your taxes? Well, we've got just the thing for you. Our volunteer income tax assistance or VITA program is starting back up February 6 and runs until April 6. We provide tax assistance Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m., all in rooms D and E. You can simply drop off your paperwork during either our parish office hours or VITA hours. For more information, feel free to call our parish office and tell them you're interested in VITA. Let's talk about Lent. Lent already, but Christmas was just yesterday. I know. I know, and that's why you have to save the date for Ash Wednesday, February 17th. We will have masses with a distribution of ashes at 8.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. And then we have a distribution of ashes at noon. For those of you who watch online or cannot attend our masses, we are having a drive-through distribution of ashes at, sep at 5 p.m. Be on the lookout for more Lenten events to come. Exciting news, Clo is back. For those of you that don't know, CLO is Children's Liturgy of the Word, where your kids can join a small group during Mass and hear and learn more about the Gospel lesson. No registration is necessary for CLO. It's offered every Sunday beginning February 7 during the 1015 Mass for children in kindergarten through fifth grade. This is a great way for kids to hear and understand the Gospel message and how it pertains to their lives. And just a reminder, everyone, this year is the year of hope, and we have some fun and exciting things ahead. See you soon. Yeah. Let's talk about Lent. Lent? Already? Christmas was just... I know. I Christmas know. was just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Exciting news. Clow is back. Clow? <laughs> Clow. Sorry. It sounds like cow, doesn't it? Come on. Come on. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be. Breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole